For this video, I'm drawing a request from a viewer. Suo from Norwich write, Dear Charlie, please can you draw the nerve supply of the abdominal viscera? Well Sue, I'd be happy to, and not just because you're my boss. To do this, I'll be returning to some topics that I've drawn out before. So rather than repeating myself more than I have to, I'll pop a link here whenever there's another anatomy video with more details. The abdominal viscera are primarily innervated by the autonomic nervous system. These are those peripheral nerves that control the involuntary processes of the body. Much like the somatic system, the autonomic nerve consists of two major groups. Efferent fibres exit the spinal cord, telling our organs what to do and how to do it. These efferents can be divided into sympathetic nerves that control our fight, flight or freeze responses, and parasympathetic nerves that allow us to rest and digest. Meanwhile, afferent fibres arrive back at the spinal cord, delivering sensory information from the viscera. This sensation tends to be pretty limited, as abdominal pain receptors can only really detect stretching or chemical irritation. So, how do we arrange all of these nerves within the abdomen? Well, let's draw them out. Here we've got our starting illustration, and as always, if you're drawing along, you can download a copy of this from the links below. On either side of a brain and spinal cord, while in the centre we have the abdominal aorta with its major branches. Finally, we've got the organs of the abdomen. On the right is the gut tube, split into its three embryological portions, the foregut, midgut and hindgut. And then down here are the pelvic viscera. First, let's add the sympathetic nerve. Now these nerves are found on both sides of the body, but I'll only be drawing them on one side to keep our illustration a bit clearer. Sympathetic fibres travel into the abdomen via the thoracic and lumbar splanchnic nerves. These have been covered in a previous video, so I'll just recap the main points. The splanchnic start of preganglionic fibres that leave the spinal cord between T5 and L3. From here they travel straight through the sympathetic chain without synapsing, before coming together and forming four splanchnic nerves. These redistribute themselves and synapse at a series of collateral ganglia that then send postganglionic fibres towards the organs. But how do these postganglionic fibres actually reach the viscera? Well, to do that, they'll enter structures known as the prevertebral plexuses. These are bundles of intersecting nerve fibres that sit at the roots of the major arteries. Some of these plexuses are named after the arteries they surround. So, around the celiac axis is the celiac plexus. Below this, the superior mesenteric artery have a superior mesenteric plexus. And it may not surprise you that the inferior mesenteric plexus surrounds the inferior mesenteric artery. We then have a superior hypogastric plexus sitting around the bifurcation of the aorta, and a pair of inferior hypogastric plexuses next to the internal iliac arteries. We also have connections between these plexuses known as the hypogastric nerves. So, back to the sympathetics. Postganglionic fibres from the celiac and aorticorenal ganglia will enter the celiac plexus. From here they'll follow the branches of the celiac artery to innervate the organs of the foregut and the kidneys. The superior mesenteric fibres travel to the superior mesenteric plexus, where they follow the superior mesenteric artery and innervate the midgut. Similarly, inferior mesenteric fibres enter their corresponding plexus and follow the associated artery to supply the hindgut. Finally, some postganglionic fibres continue inferiorly towards the superior hypogastric plexus, and from there on to the inferior hypogastric plexuses. These fibres finish by innervating the pelvic viscera. So, that's an overview of the sympathetic supply to the abdomen. But what about the parasympathetic nerve? Well, most of these fibres originate a cranial nerve called the vagus nerve. This leaves the brainstem on either side of the body, travels through the thorax, and enters the abdomen alongside the esophagus. From here, parasympathetic fibres enter the celiac plexus before following the artery to supply the foregut. Now, unlike the sympathetic nerves, our parasympathetic fibres 
don't sign up until they're near or even on their target organ. So we'll have a long pre-ganglionic parasympathetic fibre, but a really short post-ganglionic fibre just here. Other fibres from the vagus continue to the superior mesenteric plexus, where they'll follow the vessels to innervate the midgut. Some fibres even extend into the inferior mesenteric plexus, and these innervate the hindgut up to the sigmoid trolon. Below this point, parasympathetic innervation is provided by the pelvic splanchnic nerve. Not to be confused with the thoracic splanchnic, these nerves carry parasympathetic fibres from F2, 3 and 4. The pelvic splanchnic start by entering the inferior hypogastric plexuses. From here, some fibres will head medially and innervate the pelvic viscera. Others will continue upwards until they reach the inferior mesenteric plexus, at which point they'll head out and innervate the distal portion of the hindgut. We've now drawn all of the efferent autonomic fibres. Remember, each of these plexuses will contain a mix of sympathetic and parasympathetic fibres. The sympathetic fibres will synapse before they reach the plexus, but the parasympathetic will synapse after the plexus, as close to the organ as possible. Now that's how signal from the spinal cord can reach the organs. But what about the return journey? Well, sensory information from the viscera is conveyed by fibres known as general visceral afferents. These reach the spinal cord by travelling back along the closest splanchnic nerve. So, in most of the gut tube, they'll follow a thoracic splanchnic to enter the cord between T5 and L3. However, the visceral afferent from the distal gut and pelvis will follow the pelvic splanchnic and enter the spinal cord between F2 and 4. So remember, whether we have a sympathetic or parasympathetic splanchnic, that nerve will carry efferent fibres out towards the gut, but also afferent sensory information back to the spinal cord. And with that, we've finished our drawing of the abdominal innovation. Sue from Norwich, if you're watching, I hope that this was what you had in mind. And if it wasn't, I hope it wasn't so bad that I've lost my job. For everyone else, I hope this has helped you get to grip with the abdominal autonomics, but if you have any questions, problems, or requests for future videos, please just get in touch. Other than that, thank you for watching, take care, and I'll hopefully see you soon.